Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Unity between Guyana's government and opposition on the border dispute with Venezuela. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 14th November 2023, brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Details when we return. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. While steadfast in maintaining solidarity with the PPPC government regarding the Venezuela border controversy, opposition leader Aubrey Norton asserts that his party's existing grievances with the current administration will not be sidelined. In this HGP News report with Darcy Richards, you are provided with more insight into this delicate balance of unity on national security matters and opposition on domestic issues. During a discussion surrounding the border controversy with Working People Alliance member Dr. David Hines on his show Politics 101, opposition leader Aubrey Norton said that after his sit-down with President Dr. Irfan Ali, they agreed that Guyana would not relinquish any land to the Venezuelan government. He added that the opposition has no choice but to support the government, but will not waive past issues and concerns they have about the PPPC's leadership. So this issue will be united. Now, I don't want that. I made it very clear. That must not be construed to mean that everything in Guyana is good. There are still things we have to fight for. Norton claims that Venezuela is greedy and their main focus is to obtain Guyana's oil and wealth. Referencing Venezuela's current political, economic, and social crisis, Norton believes that President Nicolas Maduro is desperate to gain political points with his people. It is evident that his base has been eroded. And therefore, with the crisis, his base being eroded, the likelihood of him winning an election it's questionable. He further added that the government still discriminates against the opposition and anyone who supports it, but pettiness will not serve the national interest. Discriminates against us, African Guyanese community. It discriminates against Indo Guyanese and Aborigines who support us. I have that message out there. We have argued that the allocation of resources in the state, by the state, seeks to enrich a few in the PPP, their friends, families, and favorites. The opposition leader said that the Guyanese population should be able to draw a line of distinction between support for the people of Guyana and the struggle for a better life. For ATP Nightly News, I am DC Richards. The new state-of-the-art airport in Barbuda could be operational by the end of this year. ABS's Ursil Charles Jr. reports. Within a few weeks, Barbuda could have the region's newest airport. Prime Minister Gaston Brown, after a tour of the facility earlier Friday, registers his excitement at the airport's near completion. My understanding is the, the Barbuda airport is ready for opening. I think it's just one final survey to be done, and we're trying to expedite it on the basis we can get this um, survey done perhaps in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping that by the end of um, this month, no later than the first week in um, December, that we will have the Barbuda Airport um, open for traffic. The timeline he gives coincides with the start of the winter tourist season for the Barbuda Ocean Club project. It's important to have the airport operational to uh, accommodate the 200 guests that will be on Barbuda in December. And we are working assiduously with um, the various officials to try and um, push to get the airport and Barbuda open as soon as possible. The name of the port, which is more than 8,000 feet in length, is still to be decided. Prime Minister Brown remains confident as well. The already beautifully outfitted FBO will, barring any extenuating circumstances, 
be open before the end of the year. For ABS News, I am Ursil Charles Jr. Jamaica's Prime Minister addresses the issue of harsher penalties and Jamaica's no show for UN vote and human rights truce in Gaza. More in the CVM News item. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he has given directives for the laws to be amended to reflect stricter penalties, which will seek to deter criminals. In addition, the new Firearms Act tabled last year will undergo some changes. The penalties should be much higher than they are for the possession of illegal weapons. And so we will amend the legislation to remove any ambiguity or lack of clarity. I have given the directive to the Minister of National Security and the Minister of Justice that the amendment must be done before the end of the current session of Parliament. In other words, it must be completed before Christmas. The DPP has written uh, to the relevant minister, I believe it would be, the Minister of National Security, suggesting certain amendments. Still more news out of today's post-Cabinet briefing. Prime Minister Holness is also, well, he also responded to concerns highlighted by some Jamaicans, including the opposition spokesperson on foreign affairs, Lisa Hanna, that the country has lost its global position. This is in reference to Jamaica's absence from the UN General Assembly's vote on a human rights truce in the Israeli-Hamas conflict. The Prime Minister says this is not so, as the country has never been on more international platforms than it is now. We are friends of both peoples. And we are very distressed, saddened, and concerned about the innocent loss of life, particularly the killing of children who have no part or cause in a conflict. We're very concerned always about any act that could be considered terrorism on any state. In the same way, we are concerned here about acts that could be considered terrorist acts in our own country. Prime Minister Holness also addressed queries about the Integrity Commission's delay in certifying his statutory declarations. He says, though it has made him quite concerned, he's encouraging citizens to be patient with the IC as it's processing other cases. As it relates to my um, integrity declarations, uh, I too am concerned that they have not yet certified them. Uh, They have written to me asking various questions Uh, I have provided answers, and they have written to me again, and I'm in the process of providing those answers. You will, however, appreciate that it does take some time, and particularly for me, uh, to get two or three days to go through matters and provide answers. I simply have to be very frugal with my time. Uh, And I suspect the same for the Integrity Commission. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Ontillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. A news headline stating that Antigua and Barbuda is considering purchasing water from Trinidad and Tobago is raising eyebrows around the region. Of course, it's no secret that Antigua and Barbuda have their own water woes. Many question what Antigua's Prime Minister Gaston Brown would have meant. CNC 3's Kijan Haynes has the answer. As it turns out, the government of Antigua and Barbuda is not buying water from Trinidad. When Guardian Media reached out to a senior government official from Antigua, we were asked in response, do governments even sell water? Two Antiguan government officials confirmed the government of Antigua and Barbuda is in talks with a desalination company here, the Seven Seas Water Group, to provide them with water. The Seven Seas is headquartered in Florida, but has a plant in Point Fortin. We reached out to local plant manager Kennedy Lord for comment, but we haven't heard back. Now, as a private company, there is no need for our government to be involved in this deal in any way. 
We understand it's being brokered by a former Antiguan minister who runs a consultancy business here in Trinidad. Prime Minister Gaston Brown has been very vocal about his displeasure with the management of the Antigua Public Utilities Authority and their handling of the water situation there. So much so that today, during a post-cabinet media conference, Chief of Staff in the office of the Prime Minister, Ambassador Lionel Max Hurst, announced the removal of the entity's head. It has instructed the Cabinet Secretary to write to the General Manager of uh, APUA, instructing him to go on a pre-retirement leave. That story of purchasing water even made waves in neighboring Dominica, where citizens there felt the Antiguan government should have contacted them for help. But to allay any fears here at home, our water, for the most part, will stay right here. Kijan Haynes, CNC3 News. According to an international media source, a group of Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian applicants started an online petition after failing to get back their money from St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program. According to the source, their applications for citizenship under the CBI were initially approved. Then the CIU later indicated to those applicants the withdrawal of approval. The actions taken by the CIU are related to the international ban on Russia relating to Russia-Ukraine war. Glenn Bart of SKN Newsline reports. According to an international media source, a group of Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian applicants started an online petition after failing to get back their money from the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program. The applications for citizenship under the CBI were initially approved. Then the CIU later indicated to those applicants that there was a withdrawal of approval. The actions taken by the CIU are related to the international ban on Russia relating to the Russian-Ukraine war. At a November 2023 press conference of Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew, the Prime Minister said the matter occurred on the previous Team Unity administration and has been allowed to proceed based on existing circumstances. But he said, however, that the matter is being addressed. When we got into office, based on what was discussed, the program was stopped to these regions, as you know. Well, I don't know if you know, but it was before our time. They were stopped in June of 2022. March, sorry. Um, in 20, of 2022. And therefore, based on what was happening, we continued the action. In terms of the return payment, of course, that... And I will say plainly, I've discussed that multiple times, and that is being dealt with as well. So it doesn't take a petition or anything. I don't know which petition that would be. I haven't seen any results of a petition. I don't know who is running this petition. So I can't speak to anything that is out there just on social media. I will speak to something that is official and give you the government's official position. However, the administrative aspect of that is being dealt with, that I can say, because I think we are responsible. But when you take over something, as I said before, they have to be audited, and one, have, one must have the requisite information in terms of the return payment. Of course, that, and I will say plainly, I've discussed that multiple times, and that is being dealt with as well. So it doesn't take a petition or anything. I don't know which petition that would be. I haven't seen any results of a petition. I don't know who is running this petition. So I can't speak to anything that is out there just on social media. I will speak to something that is official and give you the government's official position. However, the administrative aspect of that is being dealt with. That I can say. The Prime Minister did not indicate how many applicants were involved or the amount of money that is to be returned to the applicants. Lindbar to Putin for SK Newsline. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all. 
perils big and small, reassurance we give, it's so clear to see, peace of mind, that's our service guarantee, we look after all our family, yes we do at every opportunity. Tillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 